welcome to the Episcopal Church of our Savior of Madison County. Whether we gather in person in this beautiful sanctuary or you are joining us on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, we are all bound together by Jesus into the community of Christ's love. And that is true eternally. I have a few announcements that I would like to make before our service begins. We are continuing to receive donations of cleaning supplies and toiletries to help out our neighbors in eastern Kentucky that are being affected by the devastating floods. And so um, we will also be receiving them next Sunday if you would like to bring them and we will be blessing these donations um, next Sunday. In your bulletin, you will find um, a letter of invitation for the special event that we are having on Sunday, September 11th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Bishop Mark will be joining us and we will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of our church meeting in this location. Um, and we will also be dedicating the Parish Mission House and naming it the Stanolin. Um, mission house so it'll be a very joyful celebration please take that letter and give it or send it to somebody that you think might like to join us for what will be a really glorious celebration there's also a sign up sheet in the narthex if you would like to help out in the planning um, for that event and refreshments for the event also there are two hymns in our service today from Wonder, Love, and Praise hymnal. You will find the music for both of those hymns in the bulletin insert. Thank you. Our opening hymn is hymn number 772, O Christ the Healer.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> A reading from Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm today is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. It begins on page 683. We will say this responsibly by whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. And find your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My prayers shall be always with you. The 
pointed epistle from, for today is from Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festival gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Jesus according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, 
When reading today's gospel lesson, written by the physician and apostle Luke, I've tried to picture in my mind this woman with a crippling disease. She was unnamed, so she is a stranger to us. We don't know how old she was, although we know she is at least 18 years old because Luke tells us that she had been burdened with her ailment for 18 years. We don't know where she grew up, whether she was single, married, divorced, or widowed, whether she was rich or poor, or whether she worked in her home or labored outside her home to support her family. Perhaps those details don't matter. The only detail that Luke provides is that she had been bent over for 18 years and unable to stand up straight. What was her daily life like? Because of this crippling disability, she must strain to see the sun, the sky, and stars. Her worldview would have been limited to what she could see looking down at her feet. Her world was limited to what she could see looking at the ground. Her world was defined by what she could see by turning side to side to what others would be able to see very readily at just a glance. What must that have been like? An image that comes to my mind is patience. I used to visit each week at the Thompson Hood Veterans Nursing Home in Wilmore when I worked there as a hospice chaplain. Like this unnamed woman, nursing home residents are often men and women who remain unknown in the broader community, except if they are fortunate enough to have a relative or a friend visit. Many of them have families that live far away and not able to visit often. They're burdened with illnesses or disease that can confine them. Some of them are totally bedbound, and their worldview is limited by the four walls of their room. If they're unable to move on their own, they have to strain to glance out the window to see the sky, trees, sunshine, or even rain. And some residents are wheelchair bound, and if they're strong enough, they're able to operate the wheelchair and scoot around to visit other people or go to other parts of the facility or even go outside to experience the fresh air and the breeze. But for many, they are <coughs> limited to lying in bed. They cannot go anywhere on their own, and their view of the world is limited by the actions of others who are kind enough to take them outside <coughs> of their room. The woman that Luke describes does not ask Jesus for help. She was simply passing by. Perhaps she'd gotten so used to being ignored that it never occurred to her that there may be someone who would help her. Perhaps she'd given up trying to get help because of the countless times that others had just walked by and didn't see her pain, didn't have compassion. And Jesus was the one that took the initiative this anonymous, suffering woman evoked Jesus' compassion. He probably recognized that her situation was not life-threatening. After all, she'd lived with this disability for 18 years. But Jesus didn't care that it was the Sabbath when healing non-life-threatening conditions was not permitted by the religious rules of the day. Without being asked, Jesus called her over to him. When she came, he placed his hands on her, just as if he was giving her a blessing. And through his compassion and touch, she was healed and set free. 
not only free from a disability, but set free to experience the fullness of life and living. And this wise and grateful woman recognized that the source of her freedom was in Jesus, standing right before her. And Luke tells us, when Jesus laid hands on her, she immediately stood up straight and began praising God. And it's perhaps ironic and even prophetic that while this woman's line of vision had been severely limited by this disability, she had no problem in seeing in the person of Jesus her salvation, <clears throat> recognizing him as the source of her healing, of her renewal of life. Where do you see yourself in this story? I recognize myself in the role of the woman before she was healed. All too often, my worldview is limited because I focus my attention on earthly things. My worldview is narrowed because I don't look up to recognize the source of everything that I have in this world is from God and to respond by praising God. I also recognize myself and the many persons this woman must have encountered over the course of those 18 years who saw her but chose not to offer any help. I recognize myself in the young Jeremiah who resisted a call to ministry, protesting that he was too young. How often do we choose not to respond to a call to reach out to help others because we feel we're not qualified? We think we're not intelligent enough or we convince ourselves that we don't have the necessary time or resources to help. Like Jeremiah, I resisted God's call to ordained ministry for years. I failed to trust that God would equip me in ordained ministry. In the Old Testament lesson, we're told that the Lord touched, he reached out his hand and touched Jeremiah's mouth. And then the Lord said to Jeremiah, now I have put my words in your mouth. I didn't understand the meaning of this until my wise spiritual director explained to me that God doesn't call the equipped. God equips the called. It's not about our words. It's about God's word and God will give us everything that we need if we, in our ordained ministry and in our lay ministry, are reaching out to help others. As baptized Christians, we're all called to respond with compassion to help others in need, just like we are in making these donations to help folks in Eastern Kentucky who are our neighbors. Jesus provides an example for us to follow. When he saw this woman, and recognized her need, he immediately responded with compassion. He didn't wait until the next day or the next week or until it was convenient in his schedule. He responded immediately. His response was simple. He called the woman and then laid hands on her as if to bless her. By calling this woman, he acknowledged her as a human being, he respected her human dignity. If we see someone in need, we don't need to know their name. We can simply call out to them. And we can never underestimate the healing power of touch. In the words of pastoral care, this is what we refer to as therapeutic touch. If a person is bed bound, or confined to a wheelchair, if a person has um, lost their ability to speak or has dementia, if they're blind or deaf, 
feeling somebody else touch them tells them that somebody else cares enough to hold their hand, to be there, that holy presence. Being present is a ministry of its own. That therapeutic touch, they're communicating to that person that somebody in the world cares for them and they are not alone. If Jesus reached out in compassion to teach others in need, we can do the same. We do this by providing lunches to the homeless through Madison Home. We do this in many other ways. And so I invite each of you to think about someone that you can call, someone you can send a card to, somebody you can re reach out and visit to provide loving kindness to provide a healing presence, to offer assistance. St. Teresa of Avila, the great Spanish medieval mystic writer and nun and church reformer famously said, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eye. Yours are the body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Christ has no body on earth but yours. Amen. 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 Turning now to page 358, I invite you to stand as you are able as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was a made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 387 using form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. 
that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Give our works in our favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That the light of the dead will shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Specifically for Bob and Lisa Kilborn, Leslie, Jim, Trish, Tom, Jills, Jacinda, the Breeden family, Yvonne and her family, Miranda, Karen, Glenn, Kathy, Shirley, Danny, Eva, Hannah, Don, Mary Alice, Hayden and Hannah, Jessica, Angie and her family, Linda, Marshall, Tracy, Brian and Kathy, and all those affected by flooding in eastern Kentucky. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Anglican Diocese of Alexandria. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Hubert's, Clark County, the Reverend Dwayne Swift Smith, Rector, and the Reverend Charles El Elstad, Assistant Priest. In Richmond, we pray for St. Thomas Lutheran Church, the Reverend Mary Metzger, and their members. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with your Father and Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. bless the donations that we've received from Eastern Kentucky next Sunday because we are still uh, collecting those donations. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
gracious and loving God, I ask that you bless these gifts that have been offered in love and sacrifice in support of the ministry of our parish and the mission of your church. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the skin to proclaim the glory of your name. human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is our, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your spirit to be for your people, the body and food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Closing hymn is hymn number 344. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. We welcome you to join us for our Wednesday evening service at um, 7 o'clock and our contemplative prayer service on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. May you be blessed and have a wonderful week.